The Chosen People. Today's that's the title of today's course, The Chosen People. The um it's it's um it's a wild comment in itself. It's actually proven to be pretty provocative, the chosen people. It seems to have a um it seems to have you know superiority complex when you say somebody you know, you're from the chosen people you're from you're not from the chosen people you know when you say it that way it sounds it sounds really bad um, what does it mean what does it mean when we say the chosen people where does it come from and um, and because this class is is under ethics and beliefs what is the ethic here? Um, you know, believe, you can believe it, not believe it, but what is the ethic of, of chosen people? So, um, interesting, interesting to note, there's probably not many other comments um, that have, have um, raised the rankles and, you know, the, the um, got the dander up of people when they hear this concept called the chosen people, the chosen people. And, um, you know, there was, um, I, I, I think it was B B B Bernard Shaw, I think, who said something to, to the effect of that if the Nazis, whose playbook was supremacy, if they would have realized, he was anti-Semite, Shaw, he was an, was he, an, he was a, um, he was an, an Irish playwright, I think, a critic. So he said the Nazis took it out of, if the Nazis realized that their Aryan race philosophy and theology was, was, um, was taken from the, from the Jewish chosen people, they would have abandoned that concept. That's what, that's what he wrote. Um, and, um, and there, there are other, there are other such comments. I think after the Hi Eileen, I think after the Six Day War, there was um, there was a, a Jewish person who said that you know the chosen people is just a ridiculous notion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what is it? What is it? And um, and by the way, the the one of the reasons why you know Judaism is different. This you have the Orthodox, and then you have the Conservative, and without going into all all the labels, the Lubavitcher Rebbe said that labels are divisive we're all jewish um and you know but but regardless there there so there is there is the you know the orthodox reform conservative etc the founder of the reconstructionist movement rabbi kaplan Mordechai kaplan one of the main reasons f for him to one of his main the main thrust of re reconstructionists one of the main thrusts is to get rid of the notion of the chosen people and I think it was for two reasons one he wasn't comfortable with it in the modern era this and um, two he didn't buy it he didn't believe in it so he wasn't comfortable with it and and two and they probably hinged one upon the other is that he he did not he did not want to uh, you know he didn't subscribe to it he just uh, and, and he didn't believe in it and he didn't it didn't talk to him and um, so that's one of the things the, the what he what he attempted to do with the reconstructionist movement is to, to take away the notion of the chosen people now in um, in the in the in every every uh, Monday and Thursday and Saturday when we read the Torah we call up somebody for an honor, and they make a blessing, and the, the words they say, Baruch Hashem, bless you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all the nations of the world to give us his Torah. Bless you, Lord our God, who giveth the Torah. Right? So that's the blessing that's recited. And probably millions, billions of people, of Jews, of over the years have gotten called up to the Torah made that blessing concept of the chosen people in the Torah itself um, the, the Torah uses the term chosen 
So what does it mean? Now, if you look at this blessing that we just recited, you've chosen us from all the nations of the world to give us the Torah. What is the Torah? The Torah is this concept of the one God. And that is, you cannot refute, it's irrefutable, the idea that the Jewish people, via the Torah, have pushed into the world the concept of the one God, monotheism. Monotheism is what the Jewish people, by way of the Torah, have the, the gift we've given. And, and we were chosen in order to be lamplighters. We were chosen in order to teach godliness and the oneness of God. When God first created the world, yeah, there was, there, was, there was Adam and Eve, and they knew about the one God, and then slowly but surely, the people became pagans. You know, by the time, by the time a couple generations had passed, the concept of the one God was, was ridiculed. Along came Noah, and Noah sort of brought it back. And he was saved in the flood, and he brought it back. And then, once again, and it was completely forgotten, this whole concept of, of the until Abraham. Abraham was, was um, who God told directly, you are now the chosen people. Monotheism, basic laws, basic ethics, was, was very universal until Abraham. Once Abraham became, was, was introduced to the world, then monotheism and Judaism became aligned. And then there were pagan worship, and then there was polytheism, etc., etc. And Judaism then contributed to the world where, where, where um, Christians and Muslims all accepted this concept of God as opposed to bowing down to statues and wood and, 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 and celestial beings, etc., etc. So, and that was with Abraham. Now, God told Abraham, I'm choosing you. I'm choosing you. Why am I choosing you? Because you chose me. So, which, which, is, which is a fascinating thing. There's, there, there's an unbelievable midrash that talks about Abraham. It says, when Abraham was a child, Abraham was a child, um, and this is not in the Torah, by the way. This is in the, you know, in, in the, um, the Midrash, the you know, homily and, and um, metaphors. And when Abraham was a child, he, he looked up at the sun and goes, that must be God. People, you know, people bow down to it. That's God. Then one night, he looked at the moon. And he goes, well, you must be God because look how many servants you have, the stars, and you've beaten the sun anyway. And he was content that the moon was God. Then along came a cloud and covered the moon. So he goes, well, the, you know, the moon got covered, so it's not God. And then the sun came up and he said, you know what? There must be something directing this, this, this whole being. There's something behind the sun, something behind the moon, something behind the stars. And he came to a logical conclusion that there is something behind and it's a God, it's a power, it's an energy that sits behind all these other energies and controls it. The Torah mentions nothing of it because Abraham came to that on his own logic. Right? The Torah is not about one's own logic. The Torah is about God is telling you that there's only one God. The problem with basing things on your own logic is that somebody who's more logical than you, smarter than you, higher IQ than you, can then talk you out of your conviction. He can say, no, what you believe in is flawed and X, Y, Z, and all of a sudden you've, um, you know, you, you, you know, you're worshiping a piece of cedar wood. Um, until that time, you're worshiping God. 
Now you're praying to God. Now you're praying to to um, you know cedar or mahogany or whatever, which which Judaism finds bizarre. Um, it was only it was only at the age of seventy five where God turned to Abraham and said, "You chose me, and therefore I choose you." It was, it was at 75 years old. What happened was God told Abraham at 75, Abraham lived in the same neighborhood, right? In the same uh, zip code as his parents and as his, the rest of his family. And God told him, leave, go. Leave your parents' house, leave your birthplace, leave your family, leave, leave your comforts of your home and, 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 and leave. Take your wife and leave. And Abraham did. Because Abraham said, if I'm being asked to do this by God, I'm going to do this. And God said, that is true faith. That is recognizing me as God. You know, to come up with your own deductions about the sun, moon, stars, that's your logic. But when I tell you to leave, and it's illogical to leave, it doesn't make sense for me to leave my aging parents to leave my comfort. I have my business. I have my friends, my community. I, I got my, you know, there's the JCC where I go. I have my favorite the Chinese restaurant. And you're asking me to leave, uproot myself and, and just be a nomad until I settle. Um, and he did. God said, now, because you did that, I'm going to choose you. Now, you can ask any knowledgeable Jew. They will tell you, does chosen people mean superiority? And they will say, absolutely not. It has nothing, nothing to do with superiority. In fact, if, uh, Jewish law is very clear, if we go around and we have this air of superiority and therefore we don't have to um, listen to the laws of the land and we don't have to abide by this or by that etc um, that is a grave error and, and uh, God is not happy you know, I was on a plane last night and I sat next to this Jewish woman and uh, obvious, an obvious Jewish woman if you get my drift and um, so we were sitting I was sitting in an exit row and so the, 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 she was, I, you know, I went to sleep. She was watching the uh, TV that, you know, she took out her monitor and then they came over to her and said, we're going to land now. Can you please put the monitor away? And she ignored them. They came over again and she, and I'm sitting right next to her and she ignored them again, again. Right. And, um, anyway, after they left for the third time and she still did not listen. She turned to me and she goes, I'm not putting this down until I finish my movie. I only got seven minutes left. Now, I get the pressure of finishing the movie, I get it. But um, but that's that's you know, that that's um I don't know what that is, but that didn't didn't lay well with me. I didn't say anything, but it didn't lay well with me. That was completely a disregard. And I think when when a person does that it causes a desecration of the Jewish people. And also, it, I think it rankles the, 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 the anti-Semites or those who are not anti-Semites to say, what was that? Because it, it wasn't, I wasn't the only one that witnessed it. Um, so being chosen does not mean you can do whatever you want. Being chosen does not mean that you can ignore the government, that you can cheat people like Bernie Madoff. Um, which, which caused, by the way, a terrible thing for the Jewish people because he was Jewish. Um, it, being chosen does not mean any of the above. Nothing. Doesn't mean that. What being chosen means is that you have a responsibility, a unique responsibility, to make sure that you represent God properly. That's what it means, chosen people that you have to convey the message of monotheism as a Jew, that you have to be bound 
by incredible ethics and values. And um, and and you you know you cannot you you, you cannot do anything that that is that is that would be conceived as chickenry, as as deceitful, as unethical, as immoral. That's what it means chosen because you represent God's people. God gave you the Torah. He didn't give you the Torah just to keep in, in, in a vacuum. He gave you the Torah to teach ethics to the world. We are as a, as we're in the portion where God gave us the Torah, he calls us a kingdom of nations. Um, a, a, a nation of kingdom, right? That your mamleches kohanim, you are priests. You are priests. You are people who, who uh, you're the religious, spiritual instruction people for the world. You're the leaders, the spiritual leaders. You're not better. You're not, you know, better looking. And we definitely ain't taller, right? Jewish people, we've come a long way. I mean, we, I can't say we've come a long way. Um, but, but the, um, you know, but compared to where we were in the 40s, um, you know, there's a lot more tall, taller Jews if you go to Israel. Really, you've got some really tough, tough, tall Jews. But it doesn't mean that we're taller. It doesn't mean we're stronger. It doesn't mean that we're, we're, we're smarter. It doesn't mean any of that. What it means is a responsibility that we have to impart knowledge, conviction, ethics, righteousness, and whatever else God wants us to impart. Um, and it doesn't mean that we can do whatever the heck we want because we're Jewish. It's, 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 in fact, because we're Jewish, we have to be extra careful, extra vigilant that somebody should not, somebody should not um, um, to say, oh, look what, that, look what that terrible you know, person did and they're Jewish and create a desecration of God's name. And and a couple of other, just, just kind of to prove my point, right? Judaism believes in the concept of a Messiah. The Messiah will come, as the Christians do. Um, the Messiah will come. The difference is Messiah has not come. Christians, it's going to be a second coming, but Messiah will come. Messiah will come from King David. That lineage, that line. Who was King David's great-grandmother? Ruth a non-Jew. Messiah, the great Messiah, has non-Jewish DNA. Because it's not all about coming from Jewish stock and therefore you're better. It's all about the responsibility that we have to, we have to give over. And, and I always say this, by the way, when a Jew respects themselves, then the world will respect the Jew. When the Jew lives up to its obligations of being super sensitive to ethics and super sensitive to kindness and genuineness and sincerity and sensitivity, um, the, the, the nations of the world will recognize it. When you have, when, when, you know, and if you don't, a, a non-Jew will respect a Jew that respects themselves as far as their mission as, you know, as far as what that entails. So it's all about responsibility. And it's nothing about supremacy. Nothing. Nothing. And if anybody, if you hear anybody um, say something derogatory about a non-Jew, they're off. They don't know what they, they just don't know what they're talking about. In fact, by the way, you may hear this term goy, goyim. It's not derogatory. It can be used derogatory. In a, in a derogatory manner, but it's not designed. A, a goyim is nations. Goy means an individual who's not Jewish. It's not derogatory. There's Jews and other nations, but but um, and we're part of the other nations. But when when we know of our responsibility, we um, you know we have to impart our knowledge to the goyim to the other nations. Not derogatory at all, and. We have to, we're taught in the Torah, we have to be humble. Not aloof, not arrogant, not superior. So that's, that's an ethic. 
right? And we have to be super sensitive to this because it's bred more anti-Semitism than anything else. I mean, there's a, you know, the, the, the book, um, the book, um, the, 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 the false book of the elders of the Protocols of Zion, um, you know, it's a, it's a book about Jewish supremacy. It's a false book. It was written by an anti-Semite, and then, of course, the the uh, um, it was translated into Arabic, and that was that. Now, now, um, you know, the, the the those who wish to see, see those who wish Israel or the Jewish people harm point to this book, but it's a false book. Nothing could be further than the truth, vis-a-vis -vis this is concerned. Um, they're, they're, um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, by the way, um, I, I went to China a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, and, um, I asked someone, what does, does China mean anything? Does the word China mean anything? So he goes, yes, it means center of the universe, All right? China is the center of the universe as far as the, the, you know, the, I guess the founders of China. They felt that they're the center of the universe. Christians thought they were the center of the universe at one point, right? The the um, the, the Muslims thought they were center of the universe at one point, um, and and um, so so you know we, we we all have we all have our issues, but uh, but uh, you're hearing it f here first. In Judaism, you're not the center of the universe. It's a responsibility. It's a burden. It's a merit. But it's also a burden, and um, and our job is to teach with the teachers, and the rest of the world are our students. And you you hope you better hope that a teacher teaches a person how to be their best, not 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 their worst. Um, and and um, now in the Torah, it says it, it says God tells us in Deuteronomy this is. By the way, there's an Amos, there's a couple of few fascinating verses, but in Deuteronomy, God tells the Jewish people, and this says it all, by the way, this says it all. He says, I chose you. God is saying to Moses, I chose you. You know why I chose you? Not because you have a lot of people. And as the Jewish nation is 16 million. The Jewish nation in times of Nazi, before Nazi Germany was 16 million. So God said, I didn't choose you because you were a lot of people. Because a, a lot of people have a lot of power. We're 16 million. We're 0.2%, percent of the world's people, 0.2%. We are... I think 2% of the United States, but 0.2% of the world. So, and, and, and we've always been, you know, and, and every time we had numbers grow a little bit, the, you know, the Nazis or the, the uh, you know, the, you know, they, 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 the Greeks or the Romans or the, you know, they, they, they cut our numbers, the Babylonians, the Turks, you know, they cut our numbers down. But God said, it's not because you're numerous. It's because of your message what it is that you have to offer the world. And the reason why it's fascinating is because if we were a lot in number, it wouldn't be impressive, right? You know, the, the, the Muslims are what? They're two and a half billion people. So they can beat people up to do as they wish. When you're 16 million and you're 0.2% of the world, you can't. You can't beat people up, right? But it's our message. It's all about the message. It's not about our numbers. It's not impressive for 2.5 billion people to talk and force God, this concept, on others. But because we're the lowest in number of mostly anybody else, that is strictly because of what it is we have to teach. And, and that's the message, my dear friends. We're chosen to teach. We're, to we're chosen, and we rose to the occasion. Abraham did. 
than Moses did. And we were asked, by the way, do you want the Torah? Do you want to be the moral consciousness of the world? And that's why Hitler hated us, by the way. Not because of our noses. Not because of our arrogance. Those that were arrogant. He hated us because we were the moral consciousness. We made him feel guilty, awkward, wrong. And, um, and, 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 and we accepted the challenge. We accepted the challenge. Before Moses died, God told Moses, you're in for a rough ride. The people are in for a rough ride. But you got to do it. Because I chose you and you chose me. And we have that bond. So we, we, it'd be much easier. And this is, by the way, Mordechai Kaplan's philosophy. Much easier for us just to assimilate and teach nothing. And just, uh, you know, go to school, be good accountants. But that's not our mission. Our mission is to teach. It's our responsibility. We were chosen for this. Some people are chosen for other things, right? We're not, we're not chosen for our athletic prowess, right? All those parents, those Jewish parents who, who um, force their kids to play hockey every day and join every basketball and, and flag football team, right, in hopes of getting a college, a college scholarship. And, and, you're wasting your time. Let the kid enjoy it, but, but right? we're not chosen for that. We're not chosen for our might, even though Israel's doing a darn good job of defending itself. And I believe, by the way, they're doing a darn good job because it's you, you, you die if you lose. I believe that's the, that's the push. We're chosen to teach, to be teachers. Everybody has their, everybody was chosen for a reason. Right? Everybody was chosen for a reason. Right? And um, and and um, this is this is what we were chosen for. So next time you see a Jew, instead of having a negative thought, saying, Oh, the chosen people, the arrogance, the arrogance, the sheer arrogance. What you should say is, please, teach me a value, teach me something please and hopefully the person will have something to teach right? and what makes a good teacher what makes a good teacher is if you're also willing to learn learn from others we don't have all the secrets we don't have all the knowledge as the Mishnah says who is wise one who learns from everybody so if you really, really want to fulfill, as a Jew, fulfill your mission of being the chosen people and imparting knowledge and inspiration and light and, and monotheism to the world, then you better listen. And if there's somebody that doesn't like you, you got to ask why. If it's just hatred, which transcends logic, then to hell with them. But if they have a reason to hate you, then you have to ask, how can I do better? How can I make sure that I mend my ways so that this non-Jew or non-Jews or this, this do not hate me? And one way, I can promise you, one way for somebody to really dislike somebody is arrogance. So humility, humility is a virtue and it's an important one and it's an important one for the Jewish people because of this chosen people misconception. Humility doesn't mean being a doormat. It doesn't mean being a schmata. It doesn't mean that people can just do whatever they want with you. And uh, you have to bend your principles and your morals and your values and you have to be spineless. It doesn't mean that. It means simply humble. Humble, but proud. Not arrogant. That's terrible. Humble, but proud. Be proud of who you are. And, 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 and don't hold your head up high. You have a mission to do. And by holding up your head up high, sir, man, you blow your mission. If you have any questions, now's a good time to ask. Um, if you, you can always ask at a later time. And um, 
If you wish to see more of these courses or get a review, you can see it at thehighcenter.com forward slash academy. You can also see it on YouTube or on Spotify. If you wish to peruse my writings, then it would be thehighcenter.com forward slash rabbi's blog. Um, please feel free to share these, this video, other videos. It is, um, you know, we try and teach every day. That's, and, and one, last, one last closing thought. The Lubavitcher Rebbe said, as far as teaching, he says, if you know an A or an Aleph, then you're obligated to teach someone else who does not know the Aleph, the A. If you know an Aleph and a Bet, an A and a B, then it's not good enough any longer just to share the A. You got to do both. So on and so forth. If you share this with others and have a conversation with others, you are hereby fulfilling your role for what you were chosen for, your, your unique mission. God bless and uh, talk soon.